Hello, everybody. Uh, we we will be discussing motion offense in this particular lecture. Uh, as I told you, I like to watch the end of basketball games and talk to those scenarios a little bit. So we'll do that before every lecture. Um, this game is between the Minnesota Lynx and the Indiana Fever in the WNBA. Back in 2015, the finals, it was uh, game three. 140 left to go, um, and the series is tied 1-1. January finds Coleman. Contested three, and the long rebound to foul. Moore was flashing down towards the Montgomery. Couldn't quite get it to Maya Moore needs a touch on this possession. Without question, Maya Moore needs a touch. Cruz finds Montgomery a three. Is good. This good game is tied again. Good shot by Renee Montgomery. 77 all. Timeout, Indiana. If you go the and out come here. down to the point guards, the last few possessions, Breon, January, great wait for Montgomery to go by on the other end. We're calling for Maya Moore to get a touch. Well, her name Montgomery says not so fast. The confidence this young woman is playing with here in game three of the finals. Renee Montgomery has been huge in this game. Each team would the total score for the finals is exactly even thus far. Tied at 77 here in game three of this best of five, Indiana basketball. Here's January here in game three quick, of this best of five. This action right here, this is the pinch, pinch post. So they clear out, make a three-man side on this side of the court. And here they bring the, normally it's a, a post player. It comes back to this high post area and they work a two-man game. So you can get the handoff, you can go into ball screen stuff, um, a lot of different things you can do. Indiana basketball. Here's January. Has plenty of space. Will pop. No. The rebound batted around, ends up with catching, but then stolen by Moore off the pass from Larkins. Moore will pedal it back out and set up the offense. Cruz around the foul screen. Cruz to the corner. Montgomery's jumper. No. And Coleman the rebound. Timeout, Indiana. Just a 2.2 second differential between the game and the shot. Let's come back. And what we call this right here. She's coming up looking like she, uh, she's going to come off the ball. We would call this a switch because they, they're icing, they're forcing her one way. So the post player switches there, which switches the stance so that she can come off the ball screen now uh, on the same side that she's on as opposed to coming off and going to the opposite. Cruz around the foul screen. Cruz to the corner. Montgomery's jumper. This shot, boy. Fever. I don't want to use that foul to get too quickly. Crowd on its feet at Banker's Life Fieldhouse. Game three is tied at 77. The series is tied at one. And Brunson is being told to foul by Reeves, and now. So they would do that. Uh, Fever, they're trying to, uh, they have a play that they drew up. Uh, Minnesota has a foul to give, meaning they can foul and not send them to the uh, free throw line. And so they just do it to kind of disrupt their, the whatever play they're, they're trying to run. Uh, almost kind of like, uh, kind of similar to like icing the kicker in football, but it's really kind of just to disrupt. They get into their motion. You get a chance to see what they're trying to do also. Um, and then you foul them. And now they have to try to do it all over again. She will. Try and have an attempt of their own. Cheryl Reeve fouls. Who are either taking the shot or getting dribble penetration. In terms of Tamika catching as many big shots as she's made in her career, you cannot go wrong there either. Game three tied at 77, 13 seconds to go. January with nine seconds left. Here's Ketchings curling around. Will dish to the corner. Johnson off the mark. The rebound scraped up, and it goes out of bounds off of who? Off of Indiana. Yeah, and so Johnson got a great Atlanta look there. Was the hits the right hand. Going to be Indiana ball. The best angle. That second ball in bounds. And for the ball. Moment. 
Minnesota still. Now this is Maya Moore. Just in case you know, she she actually the last two years, um, she did not play in order to help someone who was sent to to prison uh, unlawfully. They were wrongly convicted, and um, and she actually they they just won, just got them um, got the person set free. With one timeout remaining. Tie game, 1.7 to go in the fourth. Whalen to trigger in. Gets it to Moore. Moore will get it off. The shot is good. Game three belongs to Maya Moore and Minnesota. Yeah, so this great, this is tie like game, 1.7 to go in the fourth. Work right here. Whalen to trigger in. Gets it to Moore. Shot fake, 1.7. She knows she has enough time to get one dribble down. 1.7. Moore will get it off. The shot is good. Game three belongs to Maya Moore and Minnesota. You know, just kind of like looking at her footwork. Um, belongs to it's just perfect. She catches here, left, right. And then she goes into a shot fake. Shot fake, one dribble, left, right, into the shot. That's perfect footwork. Get it off. The shot the is good. And I guarantee you that's something that she's doing in the drill. Three balls to Maya Moore and shot Minnesota. Fake, one dribble, left, right, shot. So it was, for her, it was all in rhythm. And to be honest, her putting on the floor they will might take have helped her actually hitting the shot. So, yeah. 2015 finals, Maya Moore with a great shot in her, her storied uh, career. All right, so like I said, today we're going to be discussing the motion offense. Uh, it's going to look different from our flex offense, as you'll see. Um, some of the principles are the same, um, which, you know, some of those principles are just kind of basketball principles in general. But uh, yeah, it'll be a little bit different, and, and I'm excited to, sh to show that with you today, share that with you today. All right, so the motion offense, some of the benefits to a motion offense, unpredictable, right? So uh, last time we talked about the flex offense and, and we just talked about like one of the disadvantages of it was this predictability. Now, you know, that's also a benefit of the flex is because that's what makes it easy to teach is predictability is what makes it easy to teach, um, which is a benefit, especially when you work with young players. This offense is gonna be a little bit tougher to do with young players, but I will tell you, it is a good way to teach them, you know, quote unquote, how to play basketball. Um, and so that, so if, if they can learn these, like th these uh, principles, they can always be applied to no matter what, what defense, uh, no matter what um, offense that you're in, like you can take these principles and, and give it some motion, give it some motion principles in your, in that offense and make it a even better offense. Um, but yeah, and then you talk about like, this makes you a better like pickup player as well. Um, especially when you can do things off the ball. So it's unpredictable nature, very beneficial. The defense always has to be on their toes. Um, and it's just kind of hard to scout. Like when it comes from a scouting standpoint and the team that's running the motion, really, you, you got to give them a few principles and they got to run with it and they got to try to anticipate and they got to try to read uh, as best as possible because it's just, it's unpredictable and um, you can come down and run this offense five times and get five different um, outcomes every single time or get the same outcome, but five different ways every single time. Uh, it gets everyone involved. So again, another, another benefit for that. Um, everybody is involved again when the ball is moving and it's touching different people's hands um, on the offensive end. It's going to energize people to play defense and uh, keeping them in the game and kind of keeping people happy you know it's tough when people take go three or four trips down the court and they don't ever touch the ball and again that's something you see from a pickup standpoint um you take four or five trips down the court and you haven't touched the ball yet you're like come on man like i, I don't even want to i don't even want to play and a lot of times it, the person doesn't have to score they just need to you know feel the ball in their hands so it's another offense gets everyone involved the more people involved the more the defense has to work 
operates operates off the of principles and concepts and again these things can kind of go with you throughout life they can go with you to the to the next level of game of, of playing they can go with you to pick up um but yeah it, it's it's less about doing it this way every single time and it's more about like hey you these are some con some concepts we're going to give you these are some principles we're going to give you and then you just gonna make it happen which again feeds into that unpredictability like that that benefit that nature that we talked about earlier uh, allows for freedom and creativity and, and that's the that's the the beauty of the game man like you you do the you, you take in these principles you're taking these concepts then you add them with your skill uh and with your creativity and again that freedom portion that's that's another part of that unpredictability but you know it it's coaches when you hear coaches say hey man i just want them to go play like that's part of that right that's part of that um and you're just giving the uh, players this free it in a sense a motion offense um is similar to what um like you will find in soccer right in soccer it, it's rare you know the coach isn't dictating every single move um you have these principles you have these concepts that you have to go with and you like the ball is out there and you have to, the coach has to trust that you know they're going to make the right decision and so the same thing kind of like this motion offense not necessarily apples to apples but yeah just you, you give them these concepts you give them this, these principles and then like their freedom and creativity can take it to places that you you know it's the, the golden state warriors an example of this you know you have those concepts those principles and then their freedom and creativity you know allow for some very masterful basketball to be played uh, and then again, yeah, it's great for player development. Again, if they can understand these these concepts, they can understand these principles. Um, you can you definitely just teach them how to play basketball. And and in a sense, you know, even with what we do, we run a continuity ball screen, which we'll get into uh, in a few weeks. But you know, it, at the end of the day, like that's what you want, right? You want players and not robots. Um, and and so. It's just so good for player development um, where, again, if you get to the high school level and uh, even at the lower level, if you're not uh, afraid of losing, right, because it can be hard to pick up these concepts, but if you're not afraid of losing and you really, you know, care about how they're going to perform um, and how they're going to understand the game, man, this motion offense, motion principles, it's just great. It's just great. And uh, again, they can use it. They can use those principles. No matter what system they go into later on, they can use those piss, piss, uh, principles because they know how to play the game. They, they're learning how to play the game and to use whatever the defense does against them. All right, now, um, there are some, some type of, um, of different types of motions, right? You have the five out, um, and then that, in that scenario, again, this is exactly what it says. Everyone is out around um, the three-point line or, you know, or out on the perimeter. No one's in. For out one in, just like it says, you'll have uh, four people out around the perimeter and one person inside. Normally, that's a post player, but again, that, that can change. Three out, two in, you don't see that as often uh, nowadays, um, but I ran a three out, two in motion when I was in high school, that's what we ran. Three out, two in. Everybody kind of got to, to each spot, and we didn't even get to – we actually kind of ran it more of like a set than we did um, of really kind of just understanding, like, the, the actual principles of the offense. Um, but, yeah, three out, two in, and it was a pass and screen away offense. And kind of where we neglected, like, motion principles is just instead of running to a spot every time, like, you know, using what the defense – uh gave us and sometimes curling instead of just going to the spot curling and then the other person popping back out and so um you know so three out two in not used a lot uh, nowadays um but definitely a, t a type of motion and, and was more prevalent uh back in the day and then you have a dribble drive which this is kind of what it says but the spacing you know all those things uh, are still present and the ball does move in the dribble drive, right? You just, everything is more in the attack. You're attacking via the dribble. It's not um, necessarily like needless dribbling. Uh, it's like attacking dribble 
And and it's a it's a difficult defense, I mean offense to to defend because it just you just put pressure with that drive, you just put in pressure on the defense time and time again, um, where you get people in foul trouble and things like that. So a lot of different ways that this can be done. Uh, of course, I'm gonna show you some video uh, in a few minutes. Now, some of those principles that I talked about, okay, it requires great spacing. And you're gonna see that in the videos that I show you. Um, the spacing is it's just, it, it's what makes the defense have to make a decision. And, when, and whenever they make a decision, it's your job as the offense when you read it, that it's gonna be the wrong decision, right? But if, um, if the space is not there, then that's going to create problems because then one defensive person can guard two people, right? And so you don't you don't want that to happen. Um, need good screens to be set, right? Need good screens. This is similar to what we talked about with flex. Um, anytime, you, no matter the offense, more than likely you're just going to need a good screen to be set because that's going to give you even more of an advantage. Um, when someone on the defensive side is hindered, it's going to help you out. Hard cuts, same thing, right? Like. If you don't cut hard, you're not making the defense do anything. You're not making the defense uh, have to make a decision. And when you do that, um, you, pl you play into the defensive hand, the defense's hands. No standing, right? So, uh, and really this concept is more, I guess people would move more, but it just depends on the offense. In dribble drive, there is some standing, like, um, until a certain point, right? Like, and you'll see this, when they break, like, the free throw line area, then boom, now it's your time to move. But until then, like you need to be down in the corner. So um, it depends on it. Sometimes in your five out motions, a lot of times everybody's gonna kind of be moving at the same time. Um, even your three out, two in, everybody's gonna kind of be moving at the same time. So it just kind of depends on it. But for the most part, like you don't want people standing. You need people moving, uh, making the defense move as well. And then when you dribble, it's with a pur purpose. It's not needless dribble dribbling. It's not just, you know, showing your N1 mixtape handles, um, but there's a purpose to you dribbling, whether it's to uh, to score or to create to a better pass angle, uh, to create the spacing that you need. Um, but it's with a purpose. It's it's not just needless dribbling, because uh, that can actually stall the offense. The ball stays in one area, one hand, one one person's hands, um, and the bo ball is easier to guard. More times than not, it's easy to guard unless you have someone that's just uh, uh, just a, a great, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, individual player. All right, and so now we'll go to uh, to some video. All right, so this is Villanova women's basketball. Um, their coach actually, I think he just retired this past year. I think his name's like Ken, Henry Perrette or something like that, but he was uh, – you know, just had really good teams, multiple people that can uh, that can score from the outside, um, and they run like they've run like a five out uh, motion, as you will you'll see here. All right, so you see, uh, let me back that up some. So you see, this person is clearing out of the paint, and so five out. What you allow, man, you just you take the defender out of the paint. So if you're playing a team um, with a, a shot blocking a shot blocking center or something like that. Like you want to get them away from the paint. So this, that's what's happening right now. We're taking that person out away from the paint. Starts with a down screen. And then this is kind of like a, this is what we call a brush screen right here, right? And so she's not necessarily setting the screen for her. She's just running in front of her and then she's brushing down right behind her, right? Just kind of want to cause some confusion. Now, Notre Dame actually guards this really well. Watch this guard. What she's going to do, she's going to drop low so that her teammate can get in between them. So they, they guarded this action very well. Brush screen action, I'm assuming she's probably going to pop out after that. Nope. Then she goes to set a down screen. All right. Come off of it. She's not, and that's, this is like this constant motion part of it. Come off of it. She's not open. She's going right back down like she's moving she's denied she's going back and that's kind of one of the principles too if you're denied then cut back door boom she goes to rescreen so again you need people that are just willing screeners in this offense just willing screeners she goes to rescreen now she is open makes the pass and look she's going immediately to do something she's going immediately 
to to screen away. All we, yep, so kind of get a brush screen action that turns into a screen. And then again, here's a here's a, a, a principle. When the screen is set, one person goes out, one person goes in, the other person goes out, right? So in this scenario, the person is coming off the screen, she goes in, right? She curls it. By her curling it, her defender is kind of staying with her over the top. The person that's guarding the screener has to show and help because if she doesn't, it's going to be an easy pass for either a shot here by this person once they get down here or they can dump it off to number 30 over here. Okay. But the principle is true promotion principles. One goes out, one goes in, the other one goes out. So she goes in, the person who sets the screen, she pops out, that forces a switch. And now she gets a good shot off, right? Let's just look at that one more time. One goes, she curls in, boom, she pops out. All right, and then you've probably heard coaches say this before, but the one who sets the, the screener more times than not, they're the ones that end up getting open, right? The person that sets the screen. So it's important when you set a screen to turn and look for the basketball. All right, they're running some time down here. Boom, starts with a down screen, and then it turns into a rescreen, right? Down screen, rescreen. And then they watch this on the weak side over here. Weak side 31, and um, I think that might be number 10 or 12, right? So they get some, they just get some movement, keeping the keeping the the defense engaged. And that's an important thing too. On this weak side over here with 12 and 31, they want to keep these defenders engaged just in case. If something breaks over here, again, look at look underneath the basket right here. There's no one there, right? So if something breaks loose, they keep the, these people engaged down here so that they won't be able to help. All right? So now this is what we call a slip. 31 is looking like she's coming to set this flare screen for number two. She doesn't set it, so it's like a, a slip is like a fake screen. She's going to set it, boom. She decides she's not to, all right? Doesn't get a clear cut off of that. And then she goes right into, there's a brush, right? And so, again, this is great timing. 31 is coming. Uh, 21 is coming. Number 31 doesn't set a screen for her. 21 kind of, she just uses her as a screen, right? That's kind of like a brush, like using her as a screen. It's kind of like the pick play in football, right? Uh, as long as you're like making a, a, a movement and it doesn't look like you're purposely trying to run into them, you can get away with it, like the pick play in football. And so she uses her as a screen. She's not setting the screen. She just uses her as a screen. The defense has to adjust. Number three sees that because if she doesn't stay in help, then this is going to be a layup for number 21. Three has to stay in help, and actually she's trying to, trying to switch it. All right, she dives right here. Look, they're all trying to switch everything. She dives right here. Pass comes over. And then they get, it just calls confusion, right? Because they ended up switching, the help was forced. She's thinking like, I don't guard guards, so let me get back. Uh, number 24, Gumawale, she's thinking, let me just get back to my person. And so there's a miscommunication there. Right, and so this motion offense, it can cause confusion because it forces a switch and now a, a big is on the guard. They don't want to be on the guard. And, um, and then it just opened things up for, for them to, to score, All right? We look at some more. So here, this is going to be what we call a flare screen, right? Going away from the ball, all right? And she just, she plays with it a little bit, all right? And then look, she goes out, look at what the screener does. All right, so 31 is like she's going in. Nope, she plays with it. She comes back out. And so the person that set the screen, she goes in. All right. Now, look at this. This is beautiful basketball. Right? Look at number 25. She's there like she's about to set this screen. She's about to set this flare screen. Um, her defender is trailing because she's thinking she's going to have to help on the flare. Boom, she doesn't set it. Beautiful basketball right there. Beautiful. Watch number 32, the person that's gardener, right? She thinking she's going to set the screen, so she has to pop out the, to help on the flare. And that's great. 
And so we, we, we guard this a different way and more than likely Notre Dame does too. She just made a mistake, but just that constant motion, right? The constant moving, just keep your eye on 25 up here. All right. She's standing, she's standing, she's moving. All right. She has to worry about the, the person that's guarding her has to worry about this cut over here um, by number 21 as well. And then because 21 gets in and moves out, she moves 20, uh, 24 for uh, Agumba Wale. She moves her out of help position. Uh, Mabry over here, she's stuck on this person in the strong side corner. So she's not in a good position to help. And so the movement and the spacing, just it just, it takes away from the defense being able to help. All right. So this is kind of a motion. Look at look up top here. Uh, this kind of a motion that I think Villanova they do the the fake screen rescreen or the screen rescreen. All right. Boom. So now you get the flare, flare right over here. Flare again. And this is the spacing aspect of things, right? So look at this. So boom, you get the flare right down here between two and number twelve. That for good screen set, 23 gets hit up on the screen. Now that forces the switch. Now she's getting back and uh, forces the, it looked like it was gonna be a switch. They decide not to switch, she's getting back and the shot fake, but look at her angle. Number 23 comes in and her, her angle, look at her body position because they decide not to switch, right? And just with the contest is what she's thinking she has to contest. Now all this baseline is just open. It's all open. Now, because of, I think that's 21 over here in this corner with the spacing, she, number 24, Aguma Wale, she's forced to help. And now that's just easy basketball. And again, with the good spacing, number three is getting over there, but because there's good spacing, she just doesn't have enough time to get there. It's great basketball. All right. And that's the, that's the five out one in. So really, really good basketball there from, oh, we got one more. We got one more. Sorry about that. Now, watch this. I like this one. All right. So I want you to keep your eye on the young lady who has the ball right now. Okay. Keep your eyes on her. Number 12. So she's coming to set. Uh, it looks like she was going to set a down screen, but then 21 sets the screen for her. So 21 sets the screen. She pops out and they got to honor that because she can shoot. So they switch, they get the switch. And this is where you want your principles and your concepts to come in because you're gonna see 12 gets the switch that she wants right here. And then it comes to like, all right, now we don't have to make this complicated anymore. I got the switch, watch what she's gonna do. She passes the ball, she's just wanna get rid of the basketball and look, she just goes right to the paint. Cause she's like, I got a, I got a guard on me, right? And we call that, we call that a baby, right? She has a baby on her. All right, she's like, no need to make this complicated. And then she gets the foul call. Let's go back and watch this again. All right. Boom, she pops out. They have to honor it because she can shoot. She gets a switch and now she's like, man, I just want to get rid of the ball. Watch it, watch it. Watch when she gets rid of the ball. All right, no longer, we're not gonna play games anymore. Going right to the paint and uh, I got my advantage and I'm gonna take advantage of that, All right? So great basketball from Villanova. Um, I love going back to these clips and just seeing how uh, they move without the basketball. And, uh, and they just, they, they, you can tell they understand the principles and the concepts, even by that last play right there, where she's like, man, we got the switch we wanted. No need for us to keep running around. Just, I'm going down to the paint and I'm just going to be bigger than her. She's going to have to foul me. All right, now, so the last one we'll watch is the dribble drive motion. Kentucky men's basketball, all right? So you see the spacing aspect of it. Um, this person right here, they're, they're, they're called the dunk, right? Um, down here, and I don't know if you can see my mouse, but down here in this short corner area, you have 14, Tyler Hero. He's spacing over here to this corner. You have someone else spacing the corner, right? So the spacing is important because now look at all this room that this ball handler has, right? A lot of room to operate and forcing the defense to have to come help or do something, okay? So let me, uh, and I'm in YouTube, so it's hard for me to, to go back, all right? 
25 comes up like they're setting the screen. Um, a lot of times it's going to be a brush screen. And then the dribble, it's just a strong attack, like a strong attack. The defense has to move. Um, now Hero comes up to the opposite side. Just good, just good basketball, right? Let's go back, let's go back. All right, so watch Hero. And again, in the dribble drive, you you get the ball and you're, you'll want to exploit the spacing, right? So Hero gets the ball and he is gone. He's forcing the defense to have to come over and help. And then look up top after Hero gets the ball right here. So they're going to number three and the guy that passed the ball number two, they're going to switch in and out. All right. And just that switching action, the defense, uh, he and because Hero just decides to drive right away, the person that's actually guarding number two, he has to come over and help. Number three rises up, brings his man with him. And now that leaves number two wide open to make something happen. And they end up getting the foul call. Really, really good basketball. You can see some of the same principles, even though it's a different type of offense. Again, let's look at the space in here. It's going to start with this brush screen, and then they're all they're all getting low. So, boom, Hero's going, going to rise up. Uh, this guy's going to rise up, making the pass. Right? And it seemed like somebody got hit in the face there, so that <laughs> wasn't not necessarily the best clip. But, again, he was going to attack there. And look at all the help that he's bringing over. Look at all the help on this attack. And that's why with the with the uh, the dribble drive, it's just a lot of pressure. Look at this. Everyone is in position to help. They don't really do a good job of it. He's able to score. Again, you see the brush screen. And now he's just going to make a play, right? This is that, that freedom and that creativity that we were talking about um, uh, a little bit earlier. He gets the brush screen. 21 doesn't really want to help because number three is probably a good shooter over here. So now he's just going to operate in this spacing without any help. And now it's one-on-one. -on -one, and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to make a play. You're going to have to play defense, and I'm just going to make a play over you. One more time. Sorry about that. YouTube is not as good with the, with the navigation. But look at that. Just got the spacing that he needed, and now I'm just going to go make a play. Again, we have the brush screen again here. Three gets it. He's on attack. And again, look, no wasted dribbles by number three. No wasted dribbles. He gets it. He takes one dribble. He gives it up. And he keeps moving. And now this is going to turn into a brush screen. Watch this. Number three is not going to necessarily set a screen. Um, the guy that has the ball is just going to use him as a screen. All right? And because it is that, it is that, like, natural, like, cutting motion, and he's not actually trying to set a screen, and he's trying to avoid him, it doesn't count as a screen, even on that contact. But the ball handler can use that. It forces a switch. Look at that. Just attacking. Just attacking. And you just – freedom and creativity. Man, I, I love it. Watch right here. So now, because of the attacking, because of the moving, look at how much space is in there. You see that SEC sign? Just so much space right here. He's going to attack that, and then just going, with his freedom and creativity, he's going to make a great play. Boom, spin back. Just, just great basketball right here. Again, because they have to respect the shooters, he's not able to get over here and help. Look at all of this space. And now it's one on one, but he has to worry about my the person at the dunk line right here. He has to worry about the person in the dunk position, all right? And he challenges them. Good challenge, but just a great finish, right? Just allowing your players to to be great. Um, so again, more dribbling than what we saw with the Villanova offense, but the spacing is there, right? Uh, the they weren't over dribbling. Uh, they were being creative, right? Uh, they had they had their their, their freedom. Um, and so you see the motion principles used in different ways. A lot of times when people think motion, they think that there isn't much dribbling, but in the dribble drive, it's still a motion offense because the player's just playing, right? It ain't, it's not all scripted. They take advantage of what the, uh, what the defense gives them. Um, so hopefully you're able to see in both of those scenarios, at least how it's different from the flex offense. All right. And so there will be an assignment based off these two lectures that I'll be posting uh, today as well. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, 
don't hesitate to to reach out to me um and you know or to respond to the lecture in the announcement um area the announcement portion of uh of your dashboard so yeah i uh, hope you've enjoyed enjoyed this hope you kind of understand uh, the differences and see the differences and maybe some similarities too with the flex offense uh, and the motion offense. All right, have a good one.